P.O. Box 1763, Millsboro, Delaware, 19966. Uh, and her telephone number, and she also has uh, e, what is that? internet, amen. Linda Hartstelli is living proof that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Philippians 4 and 13, we're all familiar with that. After studying on the authors and speakers, Florence and Fred Littell, Littell, and graduating as a class speaker, Linda went on to be trained by Dr. Neil Anderson, author of Bondage Breaker and Victory Over Darkness, and I got both of those books, and founder of Freedom in Christ Ministries. She came to understand the need for helping others so they may find their purpose for living and overcoming unresolved failings in their lives through uh, Jesus Christ, just as she did. Linda believes it has been an awesome privilege to minister laughter and healing at many Christian gathers through radio, television, newspaper, and prisons on 30 Caribbean islands, led deep inner healing seminars and weekend retreats, speak at banquets, nursing homes, <coughs> churches, and teach adult Christian education. Three years ago, God blessed her with an anointed praise and ministry team that travels with her. For the last 12 years, she continues to volunteer as a Christian crisis de deliverance lay minister for Upper East Coast, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. My bless. Amen. In February of 2000, she had her first book published entitled Touched by His Staff. It consists of 45 short stories written in the style of Chicken Soup for the Soul series itself. They're all our own family story. It's the kind of book that will make you laugh, cry, and reflect on your own relationship with God. It is great for the church and unchurched men, women, teens, and those seeking answers and directions in their own life. Dr. James Kennedy, senior pastor of Coral Ridge Ministries, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, wrote, your lovely book, Touched by Your Staff, is in a class all by itself. Ms. Harcella has dedicated her life to taking in what others threw away, lead to them the healing throne of Christ, show them how to reach out to others with the same love they received, and thus became outstanding and compassionate Christian leaders. Her encouraging spiritual insights fetch, fetch deep tears, hysterical laugh, but most importantly, bring you to a place where Jesus Christ will now become Lord of your life. Amen. Amen. Linda and her husband, Jim, became the Bethel Tabernacle Church of God, Clarksville, Delaware, and her ministry is under the covering of Pastor Dennis Milner. They are also the owners of In and Out Car Care, Millsboro, Delaware. We are, they are the proud parents of two daughters, two, uh, three sons, and four granddaughters, and one grandson. Her minister's son, Eric J. Miller, graduated from the Brownsville School of Ministry and gave the graduating speech for the class of 2000 before an audience of 5,000, which was translated into 25 languages. <laughs> Call Linda today, or she would be delighted to speak, lead a retreat, seminar, and or buy a book sign at your next gathering. Amen? Amen. And I would like to uh, introduce one of my new sisters in Christ, Amen. She's a born again. She's working on her masters. And again, she won't receive, she won't receive that until the day of the rapture. Amen? Amen. Sisters in Christ, Linda Marcel. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I didn't even know this church existed. I had never even been down this road, but isn't it like God to send you to a place where he wants to be to draw all men unto him. Amen. No one else will go because there's not 25,000 people sitting in the audience. Amen. But you know what? That's not what it's about. It's about personal, and I like the size of this room because we can be like family here. Right. I went to Janine and I said, Janine, do you mind if I don't wear, I have my dress, my stockings, and my high heels out there. Yeah. But you know what, I feel like I'm with family, so I just want to hang out over there. Yeah. 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 And I just work better that way. But I bring you sh shalom. I say shalom Amen. to you. I say peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And um, I want to honor our Lord Jesus Christ for today and all of you. Thank you. Today. I did not know Carolee before this day. I know a few others of you here, but most of you don't. So it's nice to see the family that they didn't know were following you. Amen. Um, uh, Pastor Helen, I would like to just thank you for the privilege of ministering in your church. I do not take that lightly. Okay? Um, when God opens up a door. You know, like Carolee was saying before, We've had messes in our lives, okay? Mm. I've been there too, all right? That I, I praise God that they're not on the written pages anymore. But you know what? Sometimes you just look back and you go, I can't believe you're putting me here to lead people to you when I didn't even know where you were for so many years. Amen. So I want to thank you for that. And, um, and I, I never come to someone's house empty-handed. So I prayed what the Lord wanted me to bring for you, Pastor Helen. So oh. I'm going to, this is, this is oh, safe for me, all right? See what you want to miss? <laughs> this represents, Sister Helen, that to get ready for the rain that's going to fall on this church, that's oh. going to bring the fragrance of Christ in every aspect of this area oh and that it's just going to grow as a vine from him. Jim Hostelli. 
Kelly, the cameraman, that cute guy in the back. <laughs> short stories. And as you're reading the stories, you'll find where the first story is where God did a slam dunk on me on a tree tree. And um, I won't go into it. You can read the story um, because I have a different message to bring. You. But um, uh, when he asked me to write the book, I said, do we really need to go there? <laughs> and um, so You'll see an entirely different person at the beginning of that book. <laughs> um, but I wrote it basically to, because I knew there were other people out there like myself who didn't want religion shoved down their throats. And, and Jesus didn't do that. He told stories. And so that's what I like too. Just give me, give me the credit that I have enough brains to make up my own mind. Right. Okay. And, and and he'll show me. Just let him show me. And so that's what I did with the book too. I deal with happy times, sad times, but um, but it's an encouraging book that will help you walk through anything you're going through in your life. Okay. And uh, so I, uh, it's there, you know, to purchase. And um, so I hope you enjoy it. And, and if you do purchase the book, pass it around. I've had a lot of people who have bought it, passed it. If they worked in hospitals, they passed it around. It's brought a lot of people to the Lord. And, um, you know, the book was really written. It only took a couple of years to write it, but it took me seven years to get it published because I thought I was too stupid to write a book. Mm. You know, God calls you to do things, and you're like, no way. Somebody else could do this a lot better. I didn't know where the periods and the commas and, you know, and all this go. And um, my wording of my sentences weren't correct. And, and when I finally had enough nerve where I did send it to an editor, she sent me the, the uh, manuscript back. It had more markings on it. And I didn't understand a thing she wrote. So I closed it for one year. And I locked my office and I walked away. But during that year, he showed me who needed the book, and that really got to me. So I went back, and I finished it, and then it was published. And I praise God for that, because only God could do all that. Amen. 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 Years ago, you'll read in the book where we were saved on a Christian retreat, and we went there kicking and screaming. We, didn't, we were not saved. We were the last people to be saved. And... Uh, you know, we just went for free food. Okay, again, food. And, uh, and uh, just a few days, and uh, and to appease our pastor who had been after us to go. And, and we kept saying that on the third day, we're going to sneak out. It was for a week, but we were going to sneak out in the middle of the night and, uh, and go finish our vacation in Hershey Park. <laughs> well, God had other plans. And... Um, You'll read about that in the book, what he did there. Okay. But uh, anyway, I, I just want to sing a song to you that really touched my heart on that retreat. And it goes with the theme of what we're doing here today, which is bringing peace into your lives and helping you find peace so you can bring it into the lives of others and be the peacemaker that God has called us to be. First time I'm singing from people. So, <laughs> but anyway, the song goes like this. Shalom, my friend. Shalom, my friend. Shalom, shalom. I bring you God's love. I bring you God's peace. Shalom, shalom. Father, how wonderful it is to be in a church filled with women who are hungry for a word from you. Yes. Thank you, Father, that we have the freedom to gather here in this place. 
We praise you and honor you, Lord, Father of peace. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to indwell in this place and for your will to be done here today. Show us, Holy Spirit, the things that need to go in our lives yes, that Lord. keep us from experiencing the fullness of your peace, yes, the Lord. peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Speak to our hearts, Lord, and change our lives from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If there ever was a time when the world is looking for peace, it is now. Christians and non-Christians alike, everyone is seeking peace. They are seeking not only peace in their homes and their churches and on the job, but every place they go. I look around sometimes and it seems like the world has gone nuts. As God claimed in his word for the last days, good would be considered bad and bad would be considered good. Who would have ever imagined that this could possibly happen? As God, as people are paying exorbitant prices to find peace, the psychic hotlines are making a fortune, the health spots are inundated with people trying to make their minds and bodies feel better, the New Age centers are overflowing with people looking for answers, drugs are up, pornography is on the rise among women now, and it goes on and on and on. It almost seems as if everyone is looking for a quick fix to feed this uneasiness that equates with a lack of peace. Yes, yeah. So where does this lack of peace come from? Is it because we're not making enough money? Is it because we don't have time for friends? Is it because we don't have a big enough car, a big enough diamond ring, we're not getting enough sex from our spouses, or have we even found the right one yet? Or is it because we haven't been given the breaks of life? Is it because our color is wrong? Is it because our nationality is wrong? Is it because we look like a Muslim, or is it because we speak with an accent? Is it because we are not pretty enough, skinny enough, or have enough hair, or too much hair? <laughs> Could it be we suffer with a disease, have had a death in our family, or has our child been a disappointment to us? The list is endless of where it seems, it seems, our peace has been stolen. But is that really the truth? The word I have for you today is that it is time to get back to the basics of God's word Amen. and live it out. Yes. Not just reading it, change your life. Right. This is when you will find his peace, not the temporary peace that the world offers, but his peace. Amen. That surpasses all understanding. Your Ruth and Boaz story was so timely. Here she was afraid of the future and what it held. And we don't know where Boaz was before he met Ruth, but he seemed to be in a comfortable place. But as women today, I thought that story was so good because sometimes, you know, in the, even if we've been Christians for a while, we see that God has taken us out of bondage and we got to know him, we got saved. But then sometimes we find ourselves in another situation yes. where we need to be moved on again. Yes. Yes. And you're like, God, are you going to do it again for me? Well, I can tell you he will. He will. Yes. Yes. Do it again. Thank you, Lord. I would ask that you would put on your contacts or your glasses to see in the spirit what God wants to say to you today. There is always something in the physical realm that shows what is happening in the spiritual realm. And I want to share a story with you that in my own life I have reflected on as to where God took me from. I realized that he was with me even though I didn't know it at the time. I thought I had just was the loser of the century. In 1980, I was looking at a divorce from my first husband. We had had two children, we lived in the big house, 
We had all the dreams and everything. But something didn't feel right. And I could never put my finger on I was young and I was innocent. But God knew what had happened. And he knew that covenant had been broken. And that's all I'm going to say. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. he is the father of my children. Yes. Okay? And when I realized that where we were in this relationship, I knew it would never be restored. And I looked at two boys and said, how in the world am I going to support these kids? And so I stayed out of fear for many years, not wanting to move on, until one day I just couldn't take any more. And I remember here I was in a living room of furniture, a beautiful home, car, I mean everything anybody could ever want, the American dream, and I was the most unhappiest person in the world because I did not have peace. And there I sat and I cried out to the Lord. You know, we all cry out to God when we're in a mess, right? Okay? You have to say thank you a lot of times, but you know, we cry out when we're in a mess and it's like, okay, that's what it has to take me to get to the Lord. And and I said, Lord, I can't do this anymore. There has to, you have got to show me a way. You have to show me a direction. You have to show me that there's hope and there's a future in, the, in, in here. You just have to show me that I'm not going out of my mind. Amen. Amen. As soon as I finished that prayer, my sister called. And, of course, you know, we're real good at hiding things from our family. Amen. And so uh, she says, you know, how are you doing today? And I said, you know, I said, I'm at a point, you know, and I just told her that, you know, I've been in the house with kids and all this. I think it's got to be more to life. You know, I really, I feel like I'm getting lost in the middle of pampers, you know, and bills and, you know, and all this, never mind the marriage, okay? And she said, you know, she says, you've always wanted to be a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. And a light bulb went on. And there was my answer from the Lord. He was opening up the door, but I didn't know it was him right away. I didn't have two nickels to rub together. And still I, I had it, you know, when God calls you to do something, he gives you the boldness to do it, okay? <laughs> and so I asked my neighbor if she would watch the kids. I went down to the local bank and I said, look. And I went in and I asked for an appointment with the president and he met with me. And here I was, I was like I had enough gas to get to the bank. <laughs> and I said, um, Bill, I don't have any money, but I can promise you I can pay this back to you. I need $2,500. Well, 20 years ago, that was like $25,000 now, okay? And, um, and, I, and he asked me what it was for, and I said, I really feel like going to beauty school. I feel like I'd like to do that. And he wrote me out a check for $2,500, and I will forever be grateful. Mm -hmm. And with that, I went to the beauty school, I paid it off, and I came home, I arranged uh, sitters for my children, and with a very loving friend who really was as close to a mother to my children as I was, and, um, and I began um, beauty school. And, uh, and still, you know, okay, so everything's falling in a row, but I was in unknown territory. Mm -hmm. So I went, I bought my uniforms, bought my little white shoes, my little white uniform, <laughs> how to have a watch, how to have your nails done, how to have all this. Um, I had, we lived in the country, we lived up on the, in the mountains, had to go to a bigger city to drive in an hour away with a beat up car. And, you know, you're just questioning, am I doing the right thing, am I doing the right thing? And couldn't find a parking place, everything was going wrong, I was going to be late. I said, oh my gosh. So finally I find a parking place, uh, and the students are all lined up in their little uniforms, getting ready to go into the school. And I catch the last on the last one online, and I said, okay, I'm here, I'm going to do it. And just at that moment... A huge swarm of pigeons flew over me and nailed me from head to toe. Oh. I was covered with pigeon poop <laughs> in my hair, down my face, down my uniform. I mean, like they saw a target and said, go for it. <laughs> and I knew no one in the area 
And I said, if this isn't hitting bottom, I don't know what is. <laughs> and I walked into the school, and the classroom looked at me, and my teachers looked at me, and all I said was, help me. <laughs> and they did. They gave me so many old outfit or something to wear. The teacher taught shampooing that day. <laughs> cleaned me up and they became some of my best friends. Amen. When God sends you into a place, he will supply you with people who will encourage you along the way as well. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but this is for you. Um, <laughs> school was hard. I thought beauty school was going to be a snap. I always grew up that it was the dumb kids who couldn't make it in school went to beauty school. Boy, was I ever wrong. I had to learn a lot about chemistry, had to learn a lot about diseases, what was contagious, what wasn't contagious. I had to learn all kinds of things that were totally foreign to me. Plus, I had been out of school for 10 years, and you know, you don't get to memorize as well as you used to when you're in school. And still at home, I'm up with babies at night and things like this, okay? It was hard. It was a tough time. But, um, you know, and, and, and my social skills. I didn't realize how I had really lost them, being in a house all the time without really a car at that time. And, you know, you're with babies and you're talking yakety-yak all day long, you know. And I love my children, don't get me wrong. But, you know, you need women to talk to and what's going on. I didn't even know what music was out at the time. I totally lost touch with everything. And, um, and then on top of it, there was no peace in the home. So sometimes you find yourself bowing to a god of fear mm -hmm. and become paralyzed about the future. And, um, but yet, God has given me the courage to walk through that. I didn't realize that God, when you're talking about this butterfly and how the butterfly has to work its way out to build up, well, that's what I was doing. I was working my way out of an old life that God was calling me out of. And, um, and by faith, I wouldn't even say it was faith. I would just say it was survival at the time. I just didn't have any other place where there was going to be hope. And on Sundays, so what I did was I made all my meals, I did all my laundry, I cleaned the house, and um, that's how I spent my Sundays. And, and the school um, to double up and, and get out was seven months. And you really saw nobody, you did nothing, you didn't visit with anybody, you went to school. And, um, and so anyway, but one thing I did have, and that was hope. I had hope that this was going to come to an end and that a new life was waiting for me because God had said so. And every day I had to go back and I had to learn the basics of hairdressing. Just like God takes us back when we're in a mess, he has to take us back to the foundations of his work. Every day I had to learn, I had to do the same thing over and over. We had these mannequins that we worked on, and my class was about 50 people. By the end of the year, by the end of the seven months, there were probably about 20 of us that were left. It was not an easy course, and for, nobody wears really finger waves in their hair too much anymore, but we had to do them constantly on our mannequin. They're very difficult, and the teacher comes. You would know a big place, all right? I remember, I remember doing it for my grandmother. And, um, and yet, we're all complaining, why do we have to do finger waves? Nobody's wearing them. But the fact of the matter is, we had to build up the strength in our fingers to be hairdressers. And so sometimes God will take you through things that you're like, why in the world am I here? You know, why can't I get to where I want to be already? And let's get past this, but he's building you up. You're not ready yet. <laughs> Hairdressing is really all about um, learning state board tests. In New York, you have to go to school for a thousand hours. I know Maryland's two thousand, can't imagine. But, um, and the first part of the test is your practical. You go with the model and, you know, you have to work everything out in front of the proctors who are watching you and it goes about eight hours, the exam. And then you have to, after you pass that, you get to go on to your written. And when you pass that, you get your license. Um, 
And and while we were in our room, it was a room pretty much about this size with all the hairdressers practicing on their mannequins. Some people would just get so furious, you would see the mannequin go flying across the room. <laughs> and I just said, that's it, I can't do it. And we'd see people just walk out and say, this isn't for me, you know? Which kind of scared you because you were like, that's my hope, that's where I'm supposed to go. That's where my delivery is. That is my promised land. I can't let it go. Amen. And, and I was just determined not to. Well, after I finished my thousand hours, it was time for my exam. And so to prepare for the exam, you have to be dressed perfectly. If you're going to be in the beauty business, your hair must look good. It makes sense. You're not going to go to a hairdresser that has ugly hair. Um, your nails had to be good. Your uniform had to be pressed and clean. Your shoes had to be clean. You didn't wear white stockings. Nurses wore white stockings. Um, we had a valise. It was a small suitcase. We were allowed a specific number of tools in there for our test. You had two combs, you had your brushes, everything had to be wrapped a certain way, sanitized everything to prepare for this test. It was like your time up at bat. And um, I took a woman um, with me before we went. I had to do a specific set on her head, you know, pink curls this way and then that way, finger waves up on the side, you know, and all this. And when you go in, they check, they check everything. I mean, it's like the police are around you all day. When I went for my test, there were 125 of us in the room. And, um, and when I got there, I said, okay, I'm ready for this test. Here was my time. This is what I had prepared for. And uh, when I walked in, I was very, very surprised at what I saw. I saw girls in black uniforms. I saw them with sandals. I saw them with no stockings. I saw them in pink, you know, outfits. Nobody seemed to be what I was taught. And how often is that in our Christian world? Yeah. There's a lot of nonsense going on out there. And, um, and there's a lot of stuff that should be thrown out of the pulpit. Yes, yes, And, uh, and so anyway, I said, well, I only know one way to do this test, the way I was trained. <coughs> and so I did it, and it was tough, and I remember a girl dropping a comb and picking it back up. Well, she went back with fails. That's it. You can't use it again. Drop the comb. That's it. What are you going to do for the rest of the exam? Um, and it went on and on and on. But when I left, I knew that I had, I just knew that I passed. And when I got that paper, I tell you what, it was just like the day I was saved, man. I was screaming. I knew the truth had entered into my life. Amen. I knew that there was hope for the future. I knew that there was a place that God was taking me to. And here it was, fruiting the fruit of Shelby. Originally 125 people in the room. When I went for my written part, only 20 of us had passed. And as I look back now as a Christian, I think about, that's the remnant of the church. Yes, God. A lot of people think going to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Half is narrow. Yes, it is. And you've got to get back to your basics. Yes. That's the message God had given me. Oh, maybe it's baby food. Well, you know what? You don't have it yet. You got some cracks in your foundation that have to go. Hey, I can bring this message because you did it with me first, okay? I have to walk through it first, all right? Do I moan and groan and don't want to be there, just like Carolee was saying, you know? Aren't we, like, done with this? I remember when they took me through a season of patience. Gosh. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it didn't matter what line I got on at the grocery store. I knew it was the slowest. She always broke down. She didn't know how to put the paper in. You know, this one's behind me now. I can't get out of here because no room to take the little cart out. I got a screaming kid in the back with a dirty diaper. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> you know how it goes. Doesn't matter where you are. God is going to work on that crack in your foundation <laughs> until you got it right. And, it, and we've got to walk where he's telling us to walk and keep walking forward because what is down the road, we're not going to be ready for. Glory. And he is raising up an army of people right now. This is not easy. We are in the last days. This is not easy. It is time to start being more vocal about things. I'll tell you, one thing that's driving me crazy is this man trying to take uh, under God out of our Pledge of Allegiance. And, you know, 
know, and the one who took uh, uh, prayer, out prayer out of church, where were the churches? Why didn't they rise up about this? Why didn't they talk about this? Why didn't they fight about it? And now you got this nincompoop, you know, who has some pain from his father, so he doesn't want to deal with God on his daughter and all this stuff. I'll right. tell you what, we Hello. need to be praying for that man. Yes. Yes. He's broken before yes. the throne of God and to turn out like a maniac. Yes. Yep. And, you know, and, and it just amazes me that the style of clothes, I wasn't even going to go this way, but he showed me this the other day, and it was like, you know, God, I can see your indignation. I can see your heart. I look at magazines and the clothes that they are putting on our young girls. I am telling you, it's not one step different from prostitution on the Come on, man. I'm tired of this action. I'm tired of this piercing. I'm tired of this. Oh. You know what? They have desensitized these girls to such an extreme that when they go and they're in the back seat with a boy, it is no big deal if they've lost their virginity. I tell you, when I was growing up, you covered that virginity because if anybody knew that you weren't a virgin, it was a big thing. And I'm tired of mothers and fathers who are dressing their kids with yeah, little right. tramps mm -hmm. and right. then wondering why they've got a boyfriend right. who's 22 right. years old, That's you right. know, and all this stuff, and then she gets pregnant and whatever else goes That's on. Right. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of people not taking a stand for things. Let me tell you, you know Christ. you got the power inside. Yeah. You can yes, accomplish all things through Christ. Yes, Paul. And we need to unite as Christians to yes, take a stand in our community. That's right. Amen. Yes, Lord. God has asked me to do something I've never done before in my life. He has showed me to do this little skit, and uh, I haven't even practiced. I don't know nothing. So anyway, it's going to be what he wants it to be. Good. Amen. Amen. called Jesus. He's been showing it to me over a couple of years. And um, if he told me yesterday I was going to be doing this, I would have been correct doing this. But now I don't have a time to be sick about. <laughs> <laughs> what it represents is our walk with the Lord. Yes. Jesus. Jesus.
I just want to uh, to share a story with you. Um, years and years ago, um, my husband and I went took a little vacation. We went up to the Thousand Islands in upstate New York, and uh, we had rented a place, and we were near the water. We just needed to chill out for a while. And we were real tired, and so one night we decided to go out and get some ice cream. Hot summer night. And so we went to this little ice cream place, and got a little soft ice creams, and back to food again, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
And so we were sitting at a picnic table and just, you know, looking and looking around at people looking at us. And all of a sudden there was a rush of people that came and they were, you know, standing in line buying ice cream. And so, you know, you just kind of, your eyes just fall on something. And I noticed a yellow butterfly was on the ground. And all the people were like kicking it and shoving it around. And I said, how can you do that to a butterfly? You know, they're just so pretty. Even if it's, you know, just, you can't do that to a butterfly. So, um, so I went over and I picked, I told Jim, I said, I'm going to go over and go pick up the butterfly, you know, and, uh, and get it out of there. And, and it looked like it was smashed. But when I picked it up, it flew away. Mm -hmm. And God, I know, brought that thing back to life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying to you. It isn't a mistake or coincidence that Janine had that story of the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get back to the basics. Let him put you where you need to be. Let him make you strong so you can get out of where you are. I won't say sting. <laughs> <laughs> and wherever you land, bring the peace of God with you. That surpasses all understanding. And bring hope to those who are still back where you were. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>